afternoon, folks. We fix to go on a grunt mission. We're gonna take a crappie pole, of course, cause, I mean, if that's all you can catch, that's all you can catch. But we gonna seriously go after some both ends. Gruntled us, you already know. But we're gonna stick with us. We're gonna take the, we're not taking a boat. If we don't catch them in the first hole, we're gonna go to, we got about three or four holes that we've caught them in in the past. We're gonna hit these holes and we're gonna try a couple of different methods. We're gonna see if we can catch us a gruntle today. Y'all hang with us. First order of business, we gotta fill a buggy up with gas. These things that the government puts on your tanks, garbage. Mississippi Credit Card. Don't try this at home if you don't know what you're doing. But how you do it, here's how I do it. Put about three good pulls on there. Spit the gas back out. Don't drink it, folks. And we're gonna feel it boogie you. Like I said, if you're a yuppie, don't try this at home. But you'll be all day trying to pull it out of this thing. That right there, it'd be dark. We would never get to go fishing. But we was about to drive off, and Roscoe, he, he said, hey, we out of gas. I looked down short sure enough, man. That dog was smart. Try to make sure we get all of it out. Yeah, got a little bit left in there. <coughs> we might order to save it for fire ain't. start with for both end plastic bait this is one of my favorites if they don't hit this we're gonna go to a, probably a spinner bait but they some storms supposed to be coming this afternoon they should bite all right I hook this just like I'm going bass fishing we got our bullet weight. I see where that's going to hit. I go all the way through. These are Gamagatsu 3 alt hooks. If I know those big ones in there, I will go to a 5 alt. And this is a brush hog, yellow and green. Bass Pro Shop Tournament Series. I think it's called a punch hog, a bama crawl, and I don't even know if they sell that bait anymore. But I'm gonna turn y'all around and let y'all see what's happening already. Y'all watch that water. They rolling in that water already. Gar or rental one. But y'all stick with me. We fixing to catch both ends. A grunnel. Teach y'all the proper terms for it.
That's how it's done right there, boys. This ain't out long armed in front of you. This is a good six pound gun. I laid the pole down. Fight ain't over when you get him on the bank. I don't know if y'all can tell, but inside he's this and he's barely hooked. I'm gonna try to pull his mouth open and let you see. See them teeth? Them will tear your finger up. So do not stick your finger in there unless you want a good education. This is what we've been after, boys. Six pounds at least. He going in the cooler. Y'all hang with us. And that's why we're going to show you how to properly clean this fish and cook it. So stick with us, boys. I'm about wore out after that. We're going to rig back up, see if we can hang one more. This is what we was using when we hung him. I don't know if you can read that. Trigger X. I actually bought these baits at dirt cheap. They had them on sale. But that's what it is. Large bait. I think they're six pieces. This is a six inch, like a lizard type thing. And I hooked him the same way I showed you that I hooked that other bait. These grunnel, if you like, if you targeted big fish, and I'm looking in the camera, he slung mud all over my face when he got up there on that bank. But with a grunnel, you either need a dip net or you need to know that you're gonna fight him all the way to the cooler. I have, I have caught them and got them on the bank and they flop back in the water. They are a lot of fight in that fish, but that's why they're so fun to catch. Not to mention they are extremely good to eat. And I'm gonna show you how to prepare them to where you can eat them. I've seen several videos on YouTube. The only guy that got close to doing it right made a huge ordeal out of it. People, it's not hard to do this fish. Just don't put water on it. You can basically simply fillet it out, pat it dry with a paper towel, and that's pretty much what there is to it. But he flopped around till he he made an absolute mess out of my line here. But that's all right, it was well worth it. That's <laughs> why we like to swamp. All right, y'all stick with us. We're gonna try to see if we can do like old Richard Jean and catch another one. Okay. 
they hit it, you let that line take off. They need to be running the other direction so you can set that hook back in. See, he never pulled the hook out of this. But we might get him to bite again. But when he hit it, he was coming to me, so it's hard to catch him that way. Watch me hold that rod tip. You holding that rod tip, when that worm starts to descend, you're here to do. And that's when you dip it down and wait for the slack to run out. Sort of slow. Don't get in a big hurry with it. Uh-oh. Oh, dog it. Ah. This is so much fun, people. You just can't imagine. I love the bass fish, but this has got bass fish beat. I'm telling you. Something a little bit shorter. We got number two. <laughs> yes, sir. Gonna eat good tonight. Y'all hang with us. All right. Y'all have seen us. The art of catching this ground with plastic artificial baits. Um, obviously, you can catch them easy enough with cut bait or live bait on a hook with a cork. Um, we hadn't had any luck doing that, so I went back to what I knew I could do that I was confident in, and that's plastic baits. We also caught one on a um, spinner bait. And, um, but what we fix to do now is show you the most important part of this whole process. Both end, I'm going to call it grunnel. It's known as uh, scaly cat, mudfish. I don't know what all you're going to call this fish. We call them grunnel in Mississippi. They're actually bowfin is what this is. But preparing this fish is a key. It's tricky the way you do it. You cannot put water on this fish without affecting the taste. Now, if you put water on it and you immediately cook it, it don't totally burn it. It does affect the taste of it. Uh, it and it affects the texture of this meat. Uh, you don't want to... Uh, Preserve it. In other words, you don't want to put it in the refrigerator and cook it tomorrow or anything else. When you go grunnel fishing and you catch a grunnel, you go home, you clean it, you start frying it. That's just how it works. If you don't have time to do that, you put him back in the water. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, they, you look on YouTube, I know for a fact there's one video of a guy that he puts it in the refrigerator, gonna cook it tomorrow, washes it with water, and when he picks it up, it just runs through his fingers. This meat will turn to mush. That's why a lot of people say, oh, it's not fit to eat. Well, I'm fixing to show you the way to prepare ground to where he is good to eat. Probably my favorite fish of all. I love the bass fish, I love the white perch fish, you know, but grunnel is probably my favorite above bass because it pulls harder than a bass. He's more tricky to catch than a bass. Um, 
I, I, and then the eating it, it's the, it tastes way better than anything else, in my personal opinion. So I'm fixing to show you. Y'all hang with us, and I'm going to show you how to prepare this fish. All right. We're going to weigh these. Just for the sake of doing it. But now it's hard to hook this in the in them. This in here is showing us about two pounds. This is the second one that we caught. We're going to show you what to do with him though. I'm going to turn him this away where I'm not in the way. Electric fillet knife, Walmart fillet knife, about $11. The best you can go. It's one I like the best. But this is very simple. I go right behind these gills. Slab of meat right there. We're gonna flip him over, do the other side, same way. I got the scales on that. What we'll do is take a knife and cut that off. Now I did do this with this fish alive. I didn't try to kin it because you want the blood to come on out of this. It just works better that way. I'm sorry if it's gruesome looking. Uh, this is just the reality of it. Let me find my knife. Uh oh. Here it is over there. Don't ask me why, but I favor my old cheap, cheap kitchen knife with electrical tape wrapped around the handle. I was just, that's just me. That don't, none of that makes any difference. You can cut it about whatever. I just like this knife. Hit it a lick or two there, sharpen it off. Now what I'm going to do is you can feel these rib bones right here. And I'm doing this smaller one first. But you can feel them rib bones. I'm going to go right here in them with this. And there you go. And then I'm going to cut this skin that we got. And I'm going to cut down a little bit because there is some small bones connected with that. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing. When you cut right there, you can feel them. See, right there I got below them. So, yes, it looks like I'm cutting a little bit of meat off with that. But because I got into this, what that was is that top fin. And right here, there is a row of bones that run that, that top fin. So, just, I don't want no bones in my meat. I'm going to show you what to do, though. You see this meat? Right now, it's not mushy. It's not anything. If you put water on it, it's going to turn to a mush ball. It won't absolutely ruin it. If you, if you wet it and cook it immediately, you probably be okay, but it is not advisable. I do not put water on it. 
Okay, we're going to do the same thing with these ribs right here. Now, this is pretty much principle for any filleting that you do, so it's, it's pretty much the same. Uh, but I've got a one-year-old, so I'm making sure that I don't get any uh, bones. And yes, you can fry it on them bones if you want to pick them out. It's not going to affect anything. I just I have a little boy that I don't want him choked on a bone. All right, here's, here's the next part that I do. Get your roll of paper towels. You pat this meat and wipe it down and get it, the blood out of it like that because we're not putting we're not putting water on this. But we do want it clean. You don't want to eat bloody nasty meat. I know a lot of people think I'm hillbilly that I don't clean nothing, but I I actually do. I'm actually pretty picky about what I eat. I may not be clean with everything else I do. You see me slopping in the mud and everything else. None of that bothers me. But what I'm eating, I want it done right and I want it clean. Okay. Now I've got my dish pan. It's sitting in this sink right here. No, I didn't use my ice cream bucket today. We'll break it out later. Okay. Here's what I do now. I'm cleaning them scales off. I don't want them stuck to my meat. But I got it pretty well clean. You see this line running down the center? I try to pretty well follow it. It's not a deal breaker if you get off. I split that fillet in half. Okay, now that one fillet is two pieces. And then I start cutting across the grain right here making nuggets. And this is the way I prefer to do this. No, it's not the only way to cook this. This is just if most people fry fish, especially where we're from, and now we're going to do this frying it. I will later do a video at some point cooking this on a grill. It is very good grilled or on the Blackstone. Uh, so there's other ways to cook this, but you still prepare it pretty similar. If you're going to grill it, I'd recommend to pat it down. And, and before you start cutting it up, I would just put it on tin foil, put it on the grill with lemon pepper, Tony's. Lemon juice has always been good on fish to me, but I like lemon. Now, some people don't like lemon. That's personal preference. Uh, but I hadn't had any of that ruin the meat. This meat on this fish is very finicky like you, you you can't just do anyway with it but now I've, I've not ruined it with anything seasoning wise but you put it in the refrigerator for several hours or i'm going to tell you something else if you let this fish die in a cooler or in a live well or whatever lay him in the bottom of the boat he stays dead for a couple of hours you, he's not going to be any good that way either he needs to be alive when you get home with him and ready to cook him And th these things, I'm telling you, are the reason a lot of people say throw it away, it ain't fit to eat. For the average person, they're probably better off to do that very thing, throw them away. Because, But I'm going to show you if you want to eat it, it is very good fish. My opinion is it's the best fish swimming in the river. I prefer this 5 to 1 over catfish, 2 to 1 probably over white perch. I, I like white perch now. But, uh... This is, this is one of my favorites. Alright, same thing here. I'm going to cut this way. It don't matter which direction you start. Split like that. And I'm just cutting these nuggets about a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. Oh. Uh, now the, the the other one when we clean it, depending on how big that piece of uh, meat is in that fish, we'll see how we do it. But now you'll see just these two fish. There's a lot of meat on that. But these nuggets, it's it's a thick slab of meat. They just allow you to cook this a little a little more thorough, which is pretty important for this. All right. That's one of them done.
Throw that away, get me another paper towel. Now we're gonna get Big Daddy out. This is right beside me. This, you know, if you want arm's length, this is how you do it right here. You know, hold it way out in front of you and make him look real big. <laughs> but this is right up here at me. This this is a good size fish. Uh, where'd I lay my scale? Buried him over here, didn't he? We want to see what he weighs. Now, my biggest, do you see my other video if you watched it? If you hadn't, go back and check that video out. That's the biggest one I've ever caught. He weighed 11 pounds, and that was on these scales, so that's what I'm going to reference by. Oh, we're at. I'm going to have to get me a new set of scales. These are so scratched up, I can't see. We at about eight and a quarter. Y'all tell me what y'all think that says. I know you can't hardly read that. And I ain't pulling on his tail neither. <laughs> I didn't think about it. <laughs> anyway, that's a good fish. That's a pretty good sized grunnel. But, preparing him, same way. Same thing. Here we go. We're going to take our electric fillet knife. Now, in case you don't know, the scales on this thing are solid. They, they, he, he got some tough scales. Now, if you're not familiar with a fillet knife, uh, I recommend this is a good fish to learn on because it's a thick fish and you don't mess up. Like here, they still some meat on there, but not enough to worry about. Uh, but this is a this is a good fish to learn how to fillet on because it has a thick skin and you're not so easy to cut through it. Catfish, I have trouble filleting catfish. But we're going to pull, I like to get it over close to the edge here. But right there, you just kind of angle that knife down once you get started going. I keep it flat until I get started moving, and then I put a little tilt down in it. But you guys, it all, I know some of y'all are good at filleting them white perch. Y'all know more about it than I do. I'm not going to cut him open and see what he's been eating I have before just to be curious of what was inside of them to know a little more about what to use for bait, what they like. But for the sake of the video, I'm not going to go to cutting into the guts of this fish. So I don't want to make it no more gruesome than necessary today. I may cut it open off camera and look. Same thing there, once you get going, you angle down to his backbone. It runs right down in there like that. Uh, there is a little bit of meat there, but I don't know if there's a way of saving it. This works. Because you start getting into a bunch of other, we'll see. It's hard to save all of that though. I'm just one of them frugal people. I like to try to get everything I can get for some reason. There's more fish here though than I can eat, I can tell you. But Paul J got some white perch we're gonna pick. Huh? Stack them on top of one another.
I am bad curious about what he's been eating. But this is a big old female. I really don't see a full belly to tell what he's been eating. There ain't no lot of nothing in it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't think you're going to find nothing special. Not in that one. All right. I am going to wash my hands. This is a dirty paper towel. I ain't gonna do nothing but wipe blood up. I'm not wiping the meat with it. We're gonna clean up some of this mess. Now I do every time when I get through, I clean this cutting board good, wash it good and whatnot. And then I've got some Clorox spray cleaner. I usually spray that on it, let it sit a little while, and then rinse that off of it. So I keep this pretty well in good shape to uh, be cleaning fish and stuff on. Okay, okay, okay. Them big old scales, I don't know if you can see how big. Some of them scales are huge. Especially on that big fish. I think, it, but I think both of those were females. Because so. I did, there is eggs in both of them, so I'm might not positive they were both females. Unless y'all know something I don't know. Might be one of them mofodite fish. They say them eggs is caviar down there in Louisiana, especially South Louisiana. And I don't mean no offense. Them boys down there eat about everything. They had to try it. I'll eat might near anything. Tell possum, I didn't you eat no possum. I done walked up on dead cows and seen them crawl out of their belly. Mm -hmm. Ain't no eat no possum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, same principle right here with the bones. We're gonna cut these ribs out. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Y'all, I have had too good a time today. I couldn't even make pottery today for thinking about these grunts. i tell you how I come about them, though. My daddy went down there yesterday while I was working and come back with some. And I said, mm-hmm, I know where they're at now. He messed up and told me what he'd done. I don't tell nobody where my fishing spots are. If I tell you where my fishing spot is, I like you. You're my friend. I'm taking my time just so I don't cut... I'm gonna cut this white stuff off right here. Yeah. That's it right there, folks. Alright, I'm gonna just do him the same way, him. Sometimes I third them. I don't know, that's a pretty big piece of meat. I might order third it. At least part of it. I gotta cut that yellow part off. Cut that there yaller part off. See, this is another one I've got bones in. I don't know if you can tell in this light. But I got me a bucket I'm throwing my scraps in. Alright, I am going... I'm going to do one this one first. I'm going to go right up dead center. And I'm going to see... I was going to see. I think it's going to be alright like that. I don't know. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut that right there. 
like that. You just don't want to do it too thick. You don't want them pieces of meat real thick. They won't cook as good. But now we still ain't put no water on nothing. And if you got more than one kind of fish, I wash. Every other fish I clean, I just put this in a separate bowl. Different ice cream bucket. But yeah, I enjoy grunnel. Grunnel's one of the best fish that there is. He's fun to catch. I get excited when I get grunnel on the line now. And then when you get him up on the bank, he's still flopping and beating mud. And I have had him on the bank, and they go back in the water and then lose them. So. But I got this grunnel off my mind. Now, I've had him, he's been worrying me for several days, wanting to, really wanting to make this video on how to prepare it. Because there's so many people that, that don't know how. I wanted, I've done it all my life I, I mean like I said this is my favorite fish this is fine cuisine right here uh, but I'm gonna probably probably go in the big boat to the lake here next fishing trip I go on now still hadn't got me a deer I'm I done poured me some corn out there in another spot and I'm gonna I'm gonna wind up me a deer for it. I'm gonna cut that one there. I'm gonna cut that one there. But I'm gonna, if I go to the lake, I'm gonna go over there and see old Richard Coates at REM Bait Shop. Get me some manners. If y'all haven't, haven't been over there at that bait shop, he, that's where to go to get bait. He got good prices. That's local here in Neshoba County. Neshoba County. I know a lot of y'all don't know where we at watching. Some of you, I know some of y'all are from right here. Y'all want me to make some t-shirts? Got Spirit of the Outdoors on there. Let me know if you want some. I'm going. I'm thinking about ordering some. I had to have. I had to sell them. Oh. But now we may give one or two away on here. If anybody, if anybody's interested in them, I just enjoy making these videos. Enjoy clowning around on camera. So YouTube's just fun to me. I ain't. I ain't never really planning on making no money at it. I just enjoy like this. This video right here was kind of important to me uh, because I these you know there's so many people that don't know nothing about this or how to do it, and they, some of these ways are getting lost. Now I know right here where I live, there's a lot of people that know how to do it, uh, and I know a lot of you probably already know how, but there is a lot of people out there that do not know how. Uh, so we just trying to share a little knowledge and add a little fun and flair to it. So that's what the channel's all about. If you want a, a t-shirt that supports that, we thinking about having some made. Now that's two fish and that's a pretty good size dish pan. Folks, there's a good bit of meat in there. But, fix to show y'all how we do this. Let me set it over here.
that bowl over top of my meat. But we ain't washed anything. We're going to throw it in here. Put us a couple of good half holes in there. Shake, shake, shake. Appreciate your views. We'll see y'all in the next one.